Hey ghouls and gals, welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor and today's video is going to be a weekend reading vlog of the last few days in October. Um, oh, it's, it's been an October, let me tell you. Um, after getting sick for now about, it's coming up on a week and a half of being very, very sick, um, I am going to be probably spending the next couple of days, the last couple of days of October at home, isolating, making sure that I don't get anybody else sick. So um, yeah, what, what better excuse than to start a reading vlog? It's my favorite time of year. It, October is just one of my favorite months of the year for so many reasons and it always is like one of those blink and you miss it type scenarios as it usually is for the things that we look forward to all year but trying to stay on the positive side um, because number one you know it was it was really hot for most of October so we're just now getting fall weather so I can still enjoy November we can still enjoy horror all year long and we still have days of October left so um, I am going Going to be spending it reading as much as I possibly can, reading as much horror as I possibly can. So that is going to be very, very exciting. I'm not participating in any readathons, any challenges. It's just me and whatever books that I either have on my bookshelf, which spoiler alert um, for what I don't know, but um, I've pretty much read everything over there. There are some Stephen King books that I haven't gotten to yet. There are some like last books in the series that I haven't gotten to yet. But for the most part, I've read everything on my bookshelf, which is awesome. But also, um, you know, I need something physical to read and I can't go out and get more books. So I do have a couple library books. I do have a couple physical books. And then I'm also going to be utilizing the Libby app on my phone. So that's where we're going to be finding all these incredible books. I'm saying they're all going to be incredible because they are. They're all going to be incredible and I'm very excited to read all of them. Do I have any plans on what I'm going to read yet? Um, no. I'm hoping that the Lumicrate Evernight book box comes at the end of this month. Um, I have a feeling it's probably not going to come until November, but we can hope that I can fit that book in, whatever it may be, do a little unboxing. That would be really fun. Um, so, you know, maybe that. And then in terms of physical books, you know, I have Edenville by Sam Rebeline from the library. I think this is a Southern Gothic. And then I also have Lost Gods by Brom. I actually have been saving this for October. So, um, you know, the last, the last couple of days of October, probably, probably a good time to slot this one in. I also haven't read a Stephen King all month long. So that's always a good go-to author for me as well. Um, and you know, I have, I am very lucky enough to have library cards to three different library systems, which is so nice. It's so nice. Um, I, so I have quite the access to library books, which is awesome, especially because I don't feel like either returning the books that I have just to make sure they're going through their own quarantine process in my home because I don't want to return my germs. And then also I don't want to pick up any more books while I'm still sick. So um, that's really nice. I'm going to be either switching. I'm going to try because my brain still got some brain fog, still not in tip top shape. I have noticed I've really been enjoying listening to an audiobook and reading the physical book at the same time. That's helped me get immersed, get back into reading after just being laid completely flat for about a week. So hopefully it can find some books through those three libraries um, that I can have an e book copy of and the audiobook copy of to read from. Um, also, I know that, you know, it's the hardest to find a horror book just ready to check out in the month of October because everyone's reading horror, which I love. We're not gatekeeping here. Everyone read horror more. It's an incredible genre, but um, yeah, we'll just see. We'll just see what I end up reading. Um, you know how it goes here on the channel. I'm, I'm a mood reader. I cannot change my ways, nor do I want to, but I just wanted to go ahead, start the vlog. It is Thursday, October 26th and we're gonna have a good Thursday. We're gonna work a little, we're gonna read a little, we're going to continue to drink lots of fluids, get a little bit better, and I will check back in later with the first reading update of the vlog.
friends. Happy Saturday. It is the 28th of October and it is such a dark and dreary day which is perfect for my plans because me and my partner he's currently actually working right now but um our plans for today read a lot of horror, watch a lot of horror. He's gonna make some potato soup, some homemade potato soup, which is going to be very exciting. We're just gonna have um, a nice, cozy day in. And you might say, Taylor, isn't that what you do every single week? Yes. Yes, it is. It's not much different than our other plans. We were going to try and do something fun and exciting this weekend, but, you know, we've been sick. We're still recovering from being sick, so just because of that um, and because, you know, it's, it's rainy and dreary outside, that's what we're gonna do. So, sorry if you can also hear the dog toys in the background. Um, Obi loves picking the most crinkly toys um, when it comes to time for me to film these vlog updates. So, um, there you have it. But, um, yeah, it's a pretty typical weekend tonight for us, but, you know, that's okay. I do think one of the things that I wanted to do this weekend, it's like this haunted hotel. Um, it's not like an attraction haunted hotel. It's like a historic hotel that has ghost tours. I think they have those all year long. So we might get to doing that in November. Just, um, I'm just still not at a hundred from being sick, to be honest. And I just don't want any chance of us spreading sickness to other people. So we're staying in. Last night, um, we were going to watch um, Five Nights at Freddy's. Um, and I just think everyone like crashed the app collectively because we tried to watch it on Peacock streaming um, and it just was not working. It wasn't our Wi-Fi. We tested out our Wi-Fi and everything. It just kept like crashing and reloading. So hopefully we're gonna try that today and see if, since it did just come out, we can watch that as one of our horror movies tonight. Um, last night we ended up watching Renfield, which um, was not as horror as I expected. I was definitely hoping for that one to be like a little more horror. Um, I really enjoyed the parts that were focused on Renfield and Dracula. I wish like the um, Aquafina, like the cop storyline that had been kind of taken out and we focus on like when this movie was good. It was very good. It was very funny. Um, but when it was like okay it was okay um so yeah it was a fun watch and hopefully we can watch five nights at freddy's tonight because um i've been hearing great things um i'm not like i'm not into that franchise at all i've never um i know from when i used to work in a library those books um go off the shelves like hotcakes in our ya section so um i know it's very popular um but we're excited to watch it um like the 20 minutes that we got into it were very fun so yeah, I'm um, gonna watch some horror and horror books. Now, I'm currently reading Hell House by Richard Matheson, and this is an author that I had read I Am Legend from before. I enjoyed it, I think. I read it in college. Um, very, very different than the Will Smith movie, but I did really enjoy it, I think. Um, and then I'm reading this one, and the thing is, I'm 50% of the way through it, and I really want to DNF it. I feel like if I didn't have so much pressure to put on myself, not pressure, because I don't pressure myself to read books that I don't like, but if it weren't so iconic, I probably would have DNF'd it by now. And what I mean by iconic is, um, like I can say off the top of my head, I know for a fact Stephen King has said it's one of the scariest things that he's ever read. Um, it's on so many classic horror lists, um, quintessential haunted house lists. Um, it's on also like so many authors lists of either a book that genuinely scared them or a book that influenced their horror. Um, so I wanted to read it. I was excited to read it. Um, there have been some very eerie, creepy moments. There have also been some very uncomfy moments when it comes to the descriptions and talking about pretty much anyone who is not white, straight, or man. So I'm not loving it. And um, I know, I know, books are products of their time, but that doesn't mean I have to enjoy them. Um, and also having read something else by this author that I don't remember any of these things, although the main character was the only human, like, left in the world, pretty much. So, I know. I know that we shouldn't be holding books that were written in, what, like, the 70s to the same standards as books that are published today, um, but there has been not one, but two extended scenes um, that the focus of the scenes are main character's breasts. Um, 
and it's very uncomfortable. When I want to read a horror book, I want to be uncomfortable by the horror, not like we're spending pages and pages talking about how um, we're doing strip searches on this woman to make sure that she's not a fake medium, and then um, kind of spoiler, I guess, but that the ghosts think that that's um, the area to focus their paranormal activity on. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I like this would have been a swifty enough had it come out this year, let me tell you, but I am compelled to read it because I want to see. Like I want to see what all the hype is about, even if it's like, okay, I just didn't understand it. I want to see why this is in, why Hell House is in so many of these lists and just known as such a classic. Um, it is kind of a bummer because I was in the mood to read like a classic and it's just it's not really working for me i kind of wanted to read not the haunting of hill house because i've read that before but like something like that like a classic haunted house story like that so it's not really working for me but it is a short enough audiobook and like i said i'm 50 percent of the way through it at the moment so i have about four hours left of it um which is going to be slightly less because i'm not listening to it on one time speed so you know i think I think I'm just gonna power through and just see what all the fuss is about. Normally, I'm totally fine with DNFing, but I am curious because, like, the parts that are good, the creepy parts that are creepy, really good. Really good, top tier, very suspenseful, um, but the parts that are bad are very bad. So, yeah, we're, we're going to find something else as well to read, and um, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure not quite sure what that's going to be quite yet. Um, I do have, well, I have Libby, um, and a tag, my four later tag has about 140 books on it, um, precisely for situations like this one. So I think I'll probably just go through my Libby app and just see what is available to me at the moment, um, and then choose from there. Um, pick out a new book from there. I don't know if I'll be listening to it reading it on my phone, but um, I, I have to have something in between Hell House because it is just, it's not working for me like I wanted it to. So that's kind of what I'm up to. I have to kind of figure out what I'm going to read next. Um, I also have to try and not be in like decision paralysis where um, I am finding myself, I always find myself doing this, where it's like, it's the last couple of days before Halloween and I feel like I need to watch the perfect movies, the perfect books, like the perfect ones for this time of year. I don't. I don't need to focus on that. I just need to focus on just finding something. Just finding something and enjoying it and it doesn't have to be like a new favorite or like the perfect quintessential Halloween read. I just need to find something to read that's not Hell House to be honest. So um, while I am still going to finish Hell House, I will definitely be searching for another book. Hopefully I'll have another reading update um, a little bit later on today when I find that next book. I have seen on Instagram people are getting their Evernight boxes, so I don't think I'll get mine today, but that would be really cool. In that case, I would want to pick that up. But other than that, I'm, I'm not too sure. So hopefully um, the next update I will be flying through a book. That I'm really enjoying. Hopefully I'll finish Hell House. Hopefully this second half is better than the first half. I'm really hoping so just based on the way everything is like amping up a little bit um, that at least you know I'll finish it soon and then you know we'll just kind of have to see um, what I decide to pick up next. Definitely gonna be horror. Um, I was thinking because I am reading a fantasy book right now. I probably won't mention it a lot in here but I am reading, rereading, and annotating Queen of Shadows by Sarah J Maas but um, that that's like my fantasy book that I'm just slowly making my way through. It's a reread. It's my favorite book. I think it's um, solidly right now my favorite book of the Throne of Glass series, but um, this vlog is about horror. So I will be reading that. I won't be talking about it. Um, and this has just been a very, very long winded update to say that my book is not going as well as I wanted, but hopefully I can find something better. Um, I hope also the light changes were not too distracting. I have like the Philips Hue lights and they had some Halloween presets. So well, normally I just like pick one color and have it stay there. Um, they have like these rotating presets to set the mood um, and this one is a Halloween one so yeah hopefully that wasn't too distracting so I'm gonna go find another book read hang out with the pups wait for my partner to come home so that we can get started on some potato soup and a movie and I <laughs> will talk to you all sorry I'm laughing at the aggressive squeaker toy in the background but I'll talk to y'all a little bit later with another reading update
Hi friends, happy Sunday. So I finished Hell House and I, I did not like it. I don't understand. I can say that I've read it all and that it, first of all, it was not scary to me. Um, and it just, it just was super dated in like very unfortunate ways and uncomfortable ways to read. So unfortunately that is just going to be a classic that just does not work for me. Um, and that's okay. Not every book needs to work for me, but it was kind of a bummer because I had specifically saved that classic book for Halloween weekend. So um, yes, I was trying to figure out, I wanted to do kind of a mix for my next couple of books that I picked up because I still wanted to find like a more classic horror to read because I did want to read like a good horror classic this weekend. So I was still on the hunt for that, but also um, I really wanted something more contemporary and maybe something from an author I'd read before and liked. <laughs> For my next couple of reads, so the book that I am currently reading physically on my Libby app is Black Ambrosia by Elizabeth Engstrom, and this one came out, it says it came out in 2019, that's not correct. That is just the um, paperbacks from hell, like republishing. So um, Black Ambrosia, it originally came out in 1988, so that was more that classic horror feel that I wanted, and this one is about vampires. And this one, first of all, you know, I have had some success with paperbacks from hell books in the past so I figured why not start with this one the cover very striking and then once I figured out what it was about I'm gonna read a quick little bit from Grady Hendrix's introduction to this book um, but this is a book about a vampire Angelina, the main character, is assaulted by two men while hitchhiking around the country, which awakens her vampiric nature. She kills one of them and hits the road, sucking blood to survive, mesmerizing men with her eyes, sleeping in a coffin, and turning into fog when necessary. This is not a book about a vampire. Angelina's vampirism isn't the result of a curse. She wasn't bitten by a master vampire. It's not something lurking in her DNA. She becomes a vampire because she wills it. Throughout the novel's pages, what's really happening is that she's going insane, um, and so this is pretty much what that introduction says. Um, for older books, I don't mind if like things get spoiled in the introduction. It's kind of clear that that is what's going to happen as you start reading the book. I'm about 10% of the way through this one. It is written in first person. Angelina's telling you her story of how she became a vampire and she is kind of an unreliable narrator but in a way that's very fascinating because after every chapter um, she's telling you like the events of the chapter right at the end of the chapter someone else in that situation um, also gives their account, like a short little account. It looks like they're being interviewed by like a police officer or something like that. Um, they give their account too. It often varies quite differently than what Angelina says is the case. So, so this was written and published during like one of the first huge, like more recent vampire resurgences in fiction with Interview with a Vampire and just like that kind of craze of gothic vampires coming out. Um, and what was interesting is that the author herself, um, um, even mentioned Elizabeth Engstrom, by the way, if I haven't said that already, she's the one who wrote Black Ambrosia. Um, she said that if she would have read Interview with the Vampire before this one, she never would have sent this to get published. She never would have written it at all. Um, so good thing that she didn't because again, 10% of the way through and I am enjoying this. Angelina is a very interesting character to read from her perspective. So um, we do have that. And I just, I love the tagline on this book. I, I, I love the cover. I love the tagline. Um, the tagline, I don't know if you can see it from how I have the cover popped up or not, but it says, if you're close enough to kiss her, you're close enough to die. So currently reading that physically, well, on my phone. Um, and then for my audiobook, I picked up a cover that actually goes quite nicely with that one. And that would be Rouge by Mona Awad. And this one, I have read multiple things by this author, Bunny and All's Well. I enjoyed Bunny more than All's Well, but I enjoyed both. So I'm hoping third time's a charm with this author. So listening to this via audiobook, listening to it via Libra FM. Um, and this one is from the critically acclaimed author of Bunny 
becomes a grim brother's fairy tale for the modern age and a darkly funny horror novel about a lonely young woman who's drawn to a cult-like spot in the wake of her mother's mysterious death. Um, so this kind of explores, I feel like it's going to explore like beauty standards and um, maybe like mother-daughter relationships, toxicity there, toxicity with beauty standards and fairy tales and you know being told that um, the more youthful you look, um, the more beautiful you are and the more beautiful you are, the more impact, worth, and wealth that you have in society. So um, interested to read this one so far, not very far in it. I just picked this up this morning, so not very far in in it either um, but I am very much intrigued um, I really do tend to it's kind of giving me it's it's not gonna be like this book at all I am sure but just with the kind of premise and the themes being explored it kind of reminds me of Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang I think a horror book that did also go through beauty standards um, in like a very horrific way. That was a horror novel that I really enjoyed. So if it's anything like that in terms of the things it's critiquing and um, just, you know, that type of horror, I'm not that far into either of them, but I am liking both of them more than Hell House, which is good. So um, yeah, it is another absolutely rainy day, which I'm not complaining about because it's cool. It's nice. Um, me and my partner are just going to spend another day watching movies, well trying to get movies to um, play for us. Our Wi-Fi is kind of going in and out. I know I said earlier that I didn't think it was our Wi-Fi, um, but our Wi-Fi is giving us trouble with a lot of different apps, probably because of the weather, so um, it's been harder than we thought to watch any type of content, much less horror movies, so fingers crossed that we'll be able to watch some of those. Because I normally try to watch 31 horror movies in October, and I think I'm only about like I think I've only watched only <laughs> um, I think I've only watched 25 and it's the 29th so I do have some catching up to do but I thought I'd just come on give a quick reading update because I just have a feeling that both of these books are gonna go a whole lot better than Hell House did which is very exciting so yeah I'm gonna go get to reading and I will talk to you all later with another reading update Good morning, friends. Happy Monday. I am just coming on with a little bit of an update because look what just came in the mail. Um, perfect timing, honestly. So I do still technically have time to maybe read whatever book is in my Abernight box. Um, apologies. The dogs are, um, they're feeling like spring chickens, if you hear that in the background. But I'm gonna open up my Abernight box, so skip forward a couple minutes if you don't want to be spoiled for it. But oh my gosh, a little fright for your night. Um, okay, I think I know what this one is, but um, I, okay, I think I know what this is. Okay, yep, yeah, I am right about the book. It's got a little card from Tor Nightfire, which I love Tor Nightfire. I have two little dogs and it's trying to figure out what I have because a lot of times packages that come to the mail are obviously for them. So um, yes, I knew what book it was. Okay, it's Last to Leave the Room by Caitlin Starling. Um, what I am seeing though is something that looks, oh my gosh. This is a cool cover. What? What? This is so cool. You guys, I, I'm 
floored. I'm floored and I am stunned because I love Caitlyn Starling's work. I wasn't like thrilled about the cover. The cover was just kind of boring. So I was kind of intrigued to see what Evernight was going to do with this one. Last book, the first book in the Evernight box was Silver Nitrate. And that was pretty much the book itself was like the same artwork, but just changed colors. This one, holy mackerel, completely different. Oh my gosh, this is so, so cool. So this is the original cover of Last to Leave the Room. It's just like, it's fine. It's not really doing anything for me though. This, however, is so much cooler. Oh, oh my gosh, this is just so cool. So we got the front. It looks like we have like maybe some sort of like twin doppelganger sort of creepy cat action going on. The back as well, that artwork, hello, that's... That's super, super cool. We also have some very, very autumnal sprayed edges, very gorgeous. And I forgot last time um, to check the actual cover. The naked hardback of silver nitrate was very beautiful. I didn't realize there was stuff printed on it. This one um, also super cool, super cool. Um, and we do also have some artwork in the pages. Wow. This, this is a gorgeous book. This, this is why I signed up for this subscription. This book is just so gorgeous. And it's so, so different than the original um, because again, big Caitlin Starling fan. I've read everything that this author has come out with. Enjoyed it all. Um, you know, I was excited, looking forward to her new release again. The cover art didn't do a lot for me because the other covers, I would say like the Death of Jane Lawrence, absolutely gorgeous cover. Um, Yellow Jessamine, also gorgeous cover. Um, this one, so cool. Um, I think I'm gonna have to pick it up. I think I'm gonna have to pick this one up today because I am just so enchanted by the cover, you guys. This is just, this is really cool. Yeah, this is just so cool. I love, love, love like this wraith-like art style and I do love animals on covers, so very perfect. I'm so, so excited to read this now. I was just expecting like a recover, which still would have been very cool, but um, I'm very pleased with this. I, I'm super pleased, so. I will have another reading update um, later on today. Still enjoying the two books that I'm currently reading, but I think I definitely wanna dive into this one and hopefully the inside matches just how spectacular the outside is. So yeah, gonna go get to reading and I will talk to y'all a little bit later.
Hey friends, happy day after Halloween, November 1st. It's a little bittersweet now that another Halloween season has come and gone, but I did have a really, really fun Halloween yesterday. I did not update because I was just having fun. Me and my partner dressed up as Zach Bagans and a ghost. Probably put some footage of us taking photos in here, um, but yeah, it was just a very quick, easy costume that both of us were able to do. Still get into the Halloween spirit, if you will, while not actually going anywhere because we we still both kind of feel under the weather, but that's okay. But yesterday I did manage to finish a book that would be Rouge by Mona Awad, and I enjoyed this one. This is definitely kind of a horror reimagining, retelling of um, a little bit of Snow White, a little bit of The Little Mermaid in some aspects, and then just a whole lot of strange, bizarre horror. If you know Mona Wad, if you've read Bunny or All's Well, you kind of know um, her protagonists can be very unreliable in interesting ways. And this protagonist, definitely she starts out reliable, starts going a little bit unreliable based on outside factors, not her own factors. So um, very interesting there, definitely some critiques and just the various beauty standards and, um, you know, women's social currency in regards to beauty standards, age, youthfulness, um, just looking attractive at all times. So some very, very chilling moments in here. I really enjoyed it. I do think I enjoyed this one a little bit better than All's Well. I still love Bunny the most, I think, but I do think I ended up enjoying this one more than All's Well. I'm not saying anything bad about All's Well. I enjoyed that one as well, but um, this one definitely, definitely very interesting, very bizarre. Our main character's mother dies and she goes back, starts taking care of her mother's estate, realizes her mother might have gotten caught up in this very culty beauty wellness spa that has some miracle treatments. So I really did enjoy reading that one. Definitely like a dark fantasy sort of horror. I mean, the same way you'd classify Bunny, I feel like you could classify it as horror if you wanted because there are horrific things that happen, but also just like kind of satire, kind of comedic, and then also just um, like a dark contemporary with fantasy elements, all of that in there. It was a really good read to end out October. I did also pick up Last to Leave the Room because with this cover, how could I not? Um, actually, I'm doing a tandem read of this. I'm reading this physically and I have the audiobook through Libby. So um, the audiobook narrator, Exy Sands, is a narrator that I have absolutely loved before and I think her voice works really well for this type of story. The narration, very creepy, very eerie. I'm not really sure what's going on with a lot of Caitlin Starling's works. It's almost like a fictionalized alternate history of our world. This one we're following a doctor where her and her team are investigating why their city of San Sirocco, San Sirocco um, is sinking and there might be things impacting it underneath the Earth's surface. Um, so just, it's a very creepy, eerie, science-y story. I've really loved everything by this author. I'm about 15% of the way in, and I, again, just another moment of appreciation for how beautiful this book is, but um, I am going to be keeping on reading this this week, and I just have a feeling I'm going to love that one as well. So I am wrapping up the last of the October vlogs. Have no fear though, if you are a horror lover. We read horror all year round here, so um, you're still going to be seeing some horror content. I still have a ton of horror books to get through that have been on my TBR for this year, so this is not the last vlog you'll be seeing from me with horror content, but with all of that being said, it is time to wrap up this vlog, so thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope everyone had a very happy and safe Halloween. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below. What was the favorite book that you read in October? Subscribe to my channel for all of the books cozy gaming content. Stay safe, keep it creepy, and I will see y'all in the next video. Bye!